You're now listening to the Garage Guys Fantasy Sports Podcast. Hola, Garage fam. Welcome back to our podcast, the Garage Guys Fantasy Sports Podcast. Uh, That has been really shitty on getting shows out in time but we've been very busy we promise that we wouldn't do it if we didn't have so much shit going on all the time dale's in a hotel he's a busy guy look at him hey dale always we're either living on the rv or living in a hotel uh there was a song about it i believe that uh, never changes yeah the the great um what's his name it wasn't don henley but it was the other guy for the eagles Life's been good. He lived in hotels. He teared up the walls. That was him. Do you tear up the walls? I don't know the guy you're talking about, though. I feel like a terrible person. And, like, we're going to just, like, take all of our ad time away to just make sure that I find the name of this song before, like, I go insane. So it's called Life's Been Good. Um, Joe Walsh, I feel like the worst person Joe of all Walsh. time. Right. Joe Walsh, shout out to Joe Walsh. This podcast is sponsored by forgetting Joe Walsh's name and having to look it up. Did he die? Didn't he die? I don't really feel bad if I don't know that one. I feel like he should live forever, though. Like, he's definitely the kind of guy that will live on forever. Well, you would wish all those motherfuckers would live forever. Yeah. The Eagles, ACDC. Yeah. Man. Van Halen. Rip. Eddie, Eddie, R.I.P. to Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen, but the real yeah. one. You, I've realized Bye. after this weekend in Nashville at the Super Speedway, like watching you come out when we did the cornhole event, you really are like are you, you little Eddie Van, you're little Eddie Van, dude. Like you had Eddie Van vibes. I wish I was half or a quarter as cool as I got. Like, you're hot for teacher. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Classic song. It's a great one. Good music, good vibes always. Uh, But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Nashville, the Ally 400, our weekend in Nashville uh, with inside tailgating uh, in the Duke Cannon Mobile Garage um, and the homies at Shitty Coolers. Shout out to Shitty Coolers. It's the best cooler on the planet because it's shitty and it's not Yeti. Um, It's shitty. So we like Shitty Coolers. Shout out to Racetrack Rob. His feet are actually um, made of asphalt. Uh, it's proof. There's proof. It's on. I wonder Instagram. if he has, if he has cleaned his feet yet. I wonder how brown they are. There's Think no about chance. It There's no chance that that man has cleaned his feet. That's a guarantee. No chance. It's a guarantee, but. Uh, the race itself, there's been some new developments that have came out throughout the week. Uh, we got some exciting news uh, that Dale has brought to light that a uh, new manufacturer may be headed into NASCAR. We're going to cover that. And, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about, uh, I guess, we can maybe briefly mention. No, there's no point in mentioning Pocono. We'll, talk, we'll save that for the preview show. But it's coming. There's two races this weekend. We're not going to be there. I feel like it'll be hard. I feel like it'll be hard to not mention it. I think isn't it? It's a double header, isn't it? I think it's a double header. Is that right? Cup double. It header. is. It is a double header. It's going to be Saturday and Sunday. So uh, yeah, this is yeah. this is where we bag though. The double headers is where we bag because we get practice. The practice race is Saturday, and then Sunday rolls around. It's like we know what's up because Pocono is like the tricky triangle doesn't really change much. But uh, let's talk about the, the tricky Nashville super speedway that sh- I think the first thing I want to say about Nashville, shout out to Nashville, great city. Um, the race was boring to some, fun for me uh, because I made the, uh, I felt like it should have been the obvious choice to, to bet money on Kyle Larson to win. So, like I said it a week ago, I said, from here on out, I'm just putting all the jibbies on Kyle. Like, until Jimmy Johnson comes back to take that car, 
or Chad Knaus gets fired, I'll probably put the jibbies on Larson every week and just have like one other guy. I think that's going to be the best move um, until he wrecks or gets DQ'd. So um, you had Joey Logano yeah. this weekend. That that threw me off big time. Yeah. Um, Logano's record, the 750 horsepower package all year, or tracks that have the 750 has been like ridiculous. He's got one of the top average finishes next to Larson and Truex. And I, I did think Truex was going to suck. Uh, based on his practice times and his demeanor after practice. And even his qualifying lap was just, I mean, a huge screw up when trying to hit, trying to be as fast as possible. And he couldn't even hold it on the bottom. So um, I was right about Truex, missed on Logano. Uh, I think he finished 12th. Well, uh, I know that maybe he was running up front for the first half and faded. But at the end of the day, team. Team Chevy, man, or, or Team Hendrick. The Hendrick Chevys are just unstoppable right now uh, with Kyle Larson. It's just you haven't seen somebody on a streak like this since, like, Jeff Gordon in, like, the ni- the late 90s. I mean, Jimmy Johnson did stuff like this in the late 2000s. But and Isn't it funny how Larson's, like, idol is Jeff Gordon? Did you know that about him? Yeah, well, I feel like everybody's idol is Jeff Gordon, though, you know? So not everybody, like was, not everybody. A lot. Oh, a lot of these guys that were born around that time and grew up around that time loved Jeff Gordon. I mean, I like Jeff. I mean, me and Kyle are the same age. I liked Jeff, but Dale, it was it was Dale Sr. Like, that was where it was at for me. I guess I was that weird kid that was still like wearing like loud Reeboks, but liked, you know, like I hated country music, loved Dale Earnhardt. I don't. I think I, I literally root my love for Dale Earnhardt Sr. back to basketball. I watched basketball as a small child. And when I saw him hit that raccoon in that taxi, that sold me. I was like, I like that guy. Like, that's my guy forever. I haven't seen basketball. I guess it's a tragedy. But I love Trey Parker and Matt Stone for South Park. But, you know, I mean, Cal, uh, Kyle Larson's also from California. So that, that I think that has an impact on – I mean, Jeff Gordon was a – I know he's Indiana, but I think he was technically – I think Gordon was born in California, but he claims Indiana. So, I mean, Jeff Gordon just has those West Coast vibes for those kids that grew up out in different places that weren't the South. So that doesn't surprise me, not, not one bit. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still recovering from you saying you've never watched basketball. That hurts. We'll watch it one of these days. I dude, the next time me and you are in the same room, like I'm just going to carry it in my back pocket. Like Dale's like, Hey, I'm coming over. Great. I hope you got two hours. Like that is Trey Parker and Matt Stone, right? A hundred percent, dude. It's okay, like, it one of yeah. the greatest yeah. sports comedies of all time. And it, it's so underrated. So underrated. So yeah, I'll definitely have to watch it. Yeah, for sure. If if anybody listening or watching this right now has not seen basketball, just just stop this podcast and go. Just go. I'll forgive you. You need to do it. I wouldn't be mad if Dale got up right now and left the podcast to go watch it. I would still talk to you. That's how serious it is. So yeah, but but like you were saying though about like the roots of where you're from and things, I can definitely understand that. Larson has been just on fire. I, I don't see a reason not to bet against him. The Vaveline car, like, I, I know we're, we're here to talk racing and betting and money, and I'm going to get in all the rankings and everything. But Sexy. My God, dude, Terry Lobani vibes with red and blue and white. Oh, bro, F5 car. Like, if, if Vaveline does not stay on with with Kyle and that five, I I would I would go to their office and beg them. I would personally go there and be like, "You have to keep this paint scheme. You have to stay sponsoring him. There's no other way." There's no, no that way. is that was a everybody drooled over the Gravedigger scheme for Harvick, which was beautiful. The Suarez scheme with Tootsie's beautiful, but man, just the classic look that that five car had. Just a very classic, clean, simple paint scheme to me that one popped in person like really really well um 
the I think the Grave Digger scheme was incredible, though. Don't get me wrong, but I think the Valvoline scheme needs to be talked about more. That uh, scheme, they bring. Yeah, it popped as hard as Brad Case car back when he blew, blew a, a cylinder. It popped as hard as Brad K's car when he blew a cylinder. That's how hard that page scheme popped. You remember that? You remember hearing Brad's car? Did, did he drop a cylinder? I don't know what he did. I, well, I know he dropped yeah, something. I, something happened. I know Matty <laughs> D did. Yeah, Matty D 100% did. And his was like early in the race. But Pinsky did yeah, I think Brad did. Day. I think at the end of the race, his car did. They had a bad day. Sure did. Yeah, so I don't know if it was dropped or not, but but yeah, I don't see how you can. I hate myself because I just I try to go by this internet internet problems. I try to go by the statistics, and you just don't see a driver win three or four race, races in a row. You know, it just doesn't doesn't happen very often. The last time it had happened was Brad Keselowski in two thousand eighteen, and. That's like the whole reason, other than the value that Larson has, like being plus two hundred or plus two fifty. It's a whole other. It's a whole idea of why I don't bet on Larson. Uh, I think I have finally learned my lesson. I think you know I, I just can't can't not do it anymore. Can't not bet on Larson, especially after you hung out with us. I just can't. I got to do it. I'm just, you're just giving away free money. Yeah, I mean, that, and I think that that's why I was like, okay, I have to put a lot on him. Like, obviously, like, if I'm going to take two drivers, like, dude, this is, like, the second week I've taken two drivers. And I think that, like, that's just the right move. Like, if you're going to go – if you're going to bet on Larson, you can only get, like, one other guy because you're going to want to put a ton of your units on that one guy so that you can get good returns. I put three units on Larson this week, got an 8.25 uh, unit return. I, I was happy with it. It was sad. It was satisfying. It, but to me, it's like, I don't feel like I can brag about a Larson win. Cause it's like kind of expected at this point. So I ate a hot dog. I ate a hot dog. It was a good hot dog too. That was pretty creative. Yeah. It looked, it looked all right. Didn't, like didn't have cheese on it though. You don't need that. I, I'm, I will not judge you for how you eat your hot dog. Me and you both have Why done do a video. Why do people not like cheese on their fucking hot dogs? I don't understand. Everybody around me was eating a hot dog with no cheese. That blows my mind. Is that is that weird? Is I don't understand. Good? I don't understand why people get mad at people for putting ketchup on hot dogs. So it's no, not. I, I don't get. Oh yeah, yeah. Shout out to the uh, the fuckers. The uh, shout out to the hot dog the hot dog boys. committee. Yeah, the hot yeah. dog pussies. Yeah, the hot mm-hmm. dog pussies. Hundred uh, H- <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah, dude. The all HDPs. The, the HDPs. That's the new name no, right I there. Don't. But yeah, that's that's how we do things, as that's how we're creative, and uh, and and we'll we'll find more ways to do that now that no. we're just gonna put all the jibbies on Larson. So. Uh, more jibbies on Larson, more creative betting wins that aren't as hype as when we hit something like Alex Bowman in Dover and we go collect cash money from the Dover Downs. That's still, to me, that is my all-time best like win, I think, since I've betted. Just, just getting to go to the legendary Dover Downs and pick up that cash in hand, me and you both just slapping it down, rubbing it. It was just, it was incredible. Oh, that was great. I, I think I would agree. Definitely would agree. Because all the other ones, I mean, I've had a, quite a few that were in those thousands range, like plus 1,000 or higher. But that was the one that we were both riding. We both – it. What we didn't even talk about it. We both were just like, hey, who are your picks? And we were, we were like, Bowman. And I was like, yeah, me too. We're both on Bowman. Just happened to both be on Bowman. And then we hit it at the race, watched him take Kyle Larson, in the late stages, and then go to pick up the money. Great feeling. I have to agree. It was incredible. And, and, Kyle, and Kyle's and been been trying to fuck the game up ever since. So now we just got to bet all the jibbies on him. But oh, yeah. uh, get, getting more into the race, though, uh, the racing itself behind Larson, we, we have to talk about the fact that Kyle and Ricky Stenhouse were fast as shit and ran 1-2 for almost a good chunk of the race. Is it because they played cornhole and came and vibed with the garage guys on Saturday? This is a very, this is a big, 
debate, I would say, for the garage fam and anybody watching this. Like, I feel like you can't count that out. I, I, 100%. I, we, we, we will take full credit for that. Full credit, 100%. No doubt in my mind because, first of all, when I, I tweeted that, of course I tweeted it and bragged about it. Middle of the race, Ricky did like the tweet. He did like the tweet post race. So, that tells me that I think Ricky is on board with it. I think Ricky's on board with the good juju. I think he finished sixth, uh, which, man, at the end, Byron and Chastain were super fast. Uh, who I don't who uh, who finished fourth and fifth? Not sure who finished fourth and fifth, but fourth and Rick, fifth was SHR. Eric yeah, that's Amarola, right. Amarola and Kevin Harvick. Harvick. Or, no, yeah, Harvick, yeah, was, Harvick was fifth. Amarola fourth. Amarola fourth. Yep. Yeah, and Harvick fifth. It blows yeah, they my were super mind. fast. That that's a good, that's a that's a big week for them. That's a big week for them because they definitely. I mean, Harvick's kind of been up there off and on, but for Al Marola to do that, that's huge. But no, I think we should take one hundred percent full credit for the Larson Stenhouse average average finish of P three combined three point yeah three point five. Shout out to us. Not shout out not- to math. Seven divided by two is three point five. Yeah. See, Chase Math don't know. Not not, not three. Yeah, three point five. Chase yep. Chase Math been rubbing off on you some. Well, we're gonna put okay. some statistics together. We're gonna do like we're gonna do like a, a a stat thing like before Larson and Ricky visited, after Larson and, and Ricky visited, and it's gonna be. I bet the average finishes will be insanely higher on the after side, especially for Ricky. I think we gave a lot of vibes to Ricky. Yeah, absolutely. Shout absolutely. out, shout out to our boy from the sip. Shout We're out gonna to pretend, him. yeah, absolutely. The Mississippi boy, my boy. Um, we're gonna pretend like we helped Larson, but honestly, Larson was already running that way. So um, but we're gonna pretend that we did help him to another P1. Yeah, what happened was is that Larson has actually become so good that he's adopted the TB12 method. Instead of kissing children, he just comes around you and just sucks all your energy. And we have a lot of energy to give. So that was what propelled him to basically almost pretty much lead the entire race. So that was uh, that's where that came from. Because if he wouldn't have came and hung out with us, he may have not led the entire race. Um Basically, he may he may have like not led like 30 laps, but I think that his average of not leading not laps was way lower than 30. Don't really know. But yeah, I think he led. I think he led 276 out of 300. So right at right at there, somewhere there, anything over that number would have been if he didn't hang out with us. We'll leave it there. There you go. We we figured it out. We figured it out. All right, so I do want to get into this a little bit. Uh, I think one of the big misses that we had personally with the premium rankings this week, and look, Drew, this was Drew's first week coming in Asheville. So Sunday morning was hell. And we still got the garage fam squared away. We didn't have our pretty cards in the, in the premium bet discord, but we did put our bets in there. Shout out to drew for being a man amongst men, closing himself up in the RV and just straight up like rain man, drilling those fingertips on the keyboard. Like dude went to town, got the rankings out and I'm looking at the rankings right now. Um, there were some some decent size misses um, in, in, uh, in ranking, you know, the first ranking or whatever. But I will say that for the most part, you know, having Kyle ranked second and that's Kyle Larson, by the way, the biggest swing and a miss was Kyle Bush. But that was Drew backing his belief that Kyle Bush would get it. And on the preview video, we spoke really highly of JGR. JGR. But like you said, after watching those practice laps and looking at those stats of having practice back, I played Truex thinking this will be a great place differential play. So I was like, I'm kind of all in on that. However, it just was not his day. Shit sucked. It is what it is. We move on. Um, 
And then looking around, too, it's just – it wasn't the best day for the rankings, for the guys ranked first. We'll put it that way. Ryan Blaney was in Tier 2. And, and so it was just kind of a, a little bit of a swing and a miss. But, the, but hey, you know what? That's why Chef Boy has been home most of the time. Because if he was on the road every weekend, road dogging with me and you, bro, like it, it, may, not, it may not always be great for the Garage fans. But the energy just wasn't there because he didn't put all the jibbies on Kyle. And, I, and I'll stand firm to that. I think that threw everything off. He just didn't put the jibbies on Kyle. Kyle Larson. Kyle L. Yeah, and I mean, I'm with him because I missed on trucks. I had my biggest miss on trucks on the season by far. I don't think – I don't know who had Priest winning. Usually, like in our Discord, uh, if I miss or if we miss on picks and somebody random like that wins, typically somebody took them. Like somebody like was like, oh, I took – you know, I took so-and-so. No, I didn't see – I don't remember seeing a single slip where somebody took Priest. Like nobody thought. Yeah. Priest would win. Uh, Xfinity Kyle Bush won, was not worth betting on because he was minus 200 on some books. So I think I did two matchups and didn't do winner, and they went one for two. Yeah. So, uh, um, good, and then good. Sunday, I didn't even post the unit allocation. I just, connection was terrible. Planning, I just, yeah. Bleh. We'll just say bleh. Yeah. And that was bleh. the worst part. So it's like, that's the one thing that, that, that I haven't – I thought I would experience more because, so, like, I, I've went to Talladega my whole life, and, like, I know every time I go to Dega, I just expect to put my phone away because unless I have media credentials at Dega, my service is going to be dog shit. And that is what happened in Nashville, basically. Nashville's got a lot of work to do. So, uh, aside from the, the betting and the rankings – uh, all that information can be found at garageguysfantasysports.com. Definitely go check that out. If you're not a subscriber yet, go subscribe. Um, I'm getting on there uh, sometime this week. Now that we have some downtime, I'll be checking some orders. If, I know there's some people that ordered some shirts. I want to make sure I get those out to you guys. Thank you guys so much for your patience, by the way, while we've been on the road. But we're going to have some downtime. Um, I uh, – the, the Nashville itself, uh, things that they need to do real fast just to throw this out there. Number one, get a place to drain your shit tank. Uh, they need shit tank RV drains real bad there. Uh, we ran into some, some issues real quick, especially if you're in an RV and you got a lot of people in there. That shitter is going to be full pretty fast. So you need to have a good access point to drain the shitter so you don't have to pay the meth head that sucks the shit out with the truck and then thinks you're going to give them a $50 tip instead of actually filling water up in your fucking RV, because that's what happened with us. Uh, so fuck that guy uh, for being a piece of dog shit. And, uh, and then they need more water spigots in closer areas so that we don't have to try to makeshift hold buckets and pump shout out to our neighbors though. Because they were fucking epic and they tried to help. It just didn't work because we were in a high equipment piece of technology that just doesn't take unbougie things to fill it up, like high water pressure. So fuck that guy that worked for that shit drain company. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. Um, number two, uh, more water and more concession stands. If you're not going to allow coolers in your facility, you got to make sure you got enough for the people. They didn't even have enough stands. They had to build stands. So we got to experience what I would personally call from a fan perspective, Dale, a living shit show, shit show. Um, with everything going on off of the racetrack. Up in the stands, shit show. On the track, great show. I loved the race. I only got to see like a that. stage because I was in line getting beer and water for you guys. But the stage was great. So that was pretty nice. I didn't have to worry about getting food or drinks because uh, Drew owed me because I hit. I was correct on the the grudge bet. All Hendrick cars.
qualify in the top eight. That was pretty epic. So Drew owed me some money, and he he spent some of it on buying me drinks. So I was like, no, nah, you can go take care of that. But no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. I mean, this this controversy is raging on about coolers, which I don't think it's anything new, like in a lot of these tracks. So it really is just not worth my time to comment on that whole deal. Um, we're here for the fun parts of NASCAR, but yeah, no, at at Nashville, there was not enough stands because we went to Circuit of the Americas. Uh, same policy. Like, the almost the same exact policy. Once you got on the track, you could not bring your own beer and stuff. But in inside of the stands, they had plenty of food and alcohol vendors everywhere. I mean, they, the lines were long. Yeah, the lines were long, but it didn't take near the amount of time as I saw uh, the time it would take for you guys and, like, pictures on Twitter, people waiting in line. I mean, it was absurd. And the, the issue with them running out of concessions, like – in the first stage of the race is pretty pathetic, pretty pathetic. Circuit of America had already been doing this and they did it well. So like I said, I don't think the, the lack of cooler deal is anything new to a lot of these facilities. Just be prepared. You just got to do a better job of being prepared to handle the volume of people that are going to need food and drinks. Right. And uh, a shout out to how bad the trip, excuse me, Shout out to how bad the traffic was, supposedly. I'm glad we didn't have to mess with that. The traffic getting in and out of the track, supposedly, was a complete nightmare. That's uh, a lot of lot. races, though. I mean, like, I remember I remember traffic, but that's why that's why you camp. camp. That's why you buy a tent or get an RV and you go to the race and you do it right. Everybody that's never been to a race that has stumbled upon this or watched this show – if you're getting a hotel or staying in downtown Nashville and trying to get to a race, that shit's on you because it was the first race in like what, 10 years. A lot of people are 11 years. A lot of people are, are curious to know what's going on, but even for those people curious that live in the city or out there, NASCAR is at the track, the campgrounds themselves, they'll get better. And, and i I fully expect Nashville to get better um and i expect him to listen to their fans because the the fairgrounds gonna keep pushing and the super speedway already got a new contract now so they're gonna be coming back again next year i really think they should just change it to nashville speedway and drop the super there's nothing super about that place the only thing super about that place was the prices on the shit in the stands but that's okay we're not here to bitch about that because everybody gotta make their money but you just got to have the shit so that you can make the money. You got to have the shit there if you're not going to let people do it. So no more talk of that. Um, number three, they need more shit around that place. And I feel like now that that was a success, we're going to start seeing more businesses pop up around that area. You know, how? remember how Texas was? How Texas had this huge strip mall. They had a fucking Bucky's. They had uh, restaurants out the ass. They've got to build that area up over there in Smyrna. They are in, uh, in, in what, what's it called? Uh, uh, Lebanon. They, I think Tennessee people call it Lebanon. It's Lebanon. They literally, Tennessee has a problem. Lebanon. Yeah. Tennessee has a problem naming cities after countries. They really do. Like, it's like an addiction. They have like Paris. <laughs> they have fucking Manchester. I don't even know. Like just too much shit. But yeah, they got to build businesses around there. I think all that Dover was, was like that too. Dover was like that too. Same kind of deal. Thought that was super cool. Yeah, that's one of the those. But when you get to like Darlington, uh, Bristol's like this as well, and obviously Nashville. Uh, there's a lot of those NASCAR tracks. I mean, Talladega is kind of like that too. Where there's just nothing. But those are okay. It, like those nothing. are okay. Those are because we expect that. We know that. And the people that go to those usually stay there. They're not getting hotels and shit. Like, you go to Talladega, you better have a fucking RV or a camper. And you better have a lot of groceries and beer. That's all I'm saying. Agreed. Much, much agreed. But when me and my dad went to Bristol, we would stay in a place called uh, Alexander City. Or Alexander City. I think it's like 45 minutes away. So, yeah. But it's obviously best to, to try to camp out. I don't know what the camping's like in Bristol, though. I have no clue. I've heard it's fun, but never experienced it. I've only been there to watch races. Yeah. I, uh, 
I, I've never been to Bristol. I'm hoping to get to go this year. A lot of, lot, lot of, lot of interesting, good stuff coming up for the garage guys for sure. Um, but that's really my only three things that I really could have to say about Nashville. Other than that, we, we had a couple of nights where we got to go out downtown, shout out to all the great people that we got to hang out with and meet, uh, guys made, made it a very fun time. And, um, overall though, I would say I, I loved, I loved the, uh, I loved the weekend. It's just the, the campground nightlife thing. It was just whatever. It just, it wasn't the best. Wasn't the best. It was the, it was the worst nightlife at a campground at a NASCAR race I've ever been to with out question. I mean, that was shocking, shocking. I Um, think it was just shocking. I mean, I don't even, everybody was asleep by like 11. I mean, it was just, if you want to get lit, go, to Broadway, go to go Printer's to Alley, just go to the city. You know, I know it's 40 minutes away or whatever, but it's worth it to go for at least one night if you're trying to do something like super fun because at night there ain't anything going on in the campgrounds. Nothing. That's what we had to do, and that's what we did. Um, we tried to start the party up. Supposedly Rob threw a big party on, on, uh, on, on Friday night. So it was a big party at the Duke Cannon Mobile Garage on Friday. I know that much. We weren't there, but we were taking over unders on whether he was asleep or not. And when I opened that door and saw him stand there, like, oh, what's up, guys? I was like, fucking Rob's awake. Like, this is insane. Like, this is crazy. Um, he was a machine this past weekend, dude. Rob Honestly, is a machine. Like, he, he's always, season. well, he, he, he is a machine, but this weekend, particularly, I mean, he was getting amped up about, about the fact that the campgrounds were not that cool. I mean, amped up about it. And if he just turned into, like, Super Machine, like Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator. He's like, angry. Uh, I haven't seen all the new Terminators. But uh, let's go. With, no, he, he went from Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator to, like, the Terminator and Terminator 2. That was, like, like the slick, like, like, the, like the, the one that was – you, like, couldn't kill that thing. Yeah, that thing. That was raw. <laughs> he was fucking invincible. Then that Terminator is was pretty invincible. Yeah, fuck that guy, lick, lick, liquid Terminator guy. But, yeah, but yeah, Rob like, was cool with about it. But like, yeah, dude, he just literally for, steal. Yeah, oh, dude, I, what a great it, bad guy though. What it was the it was the funniest <laughs> shit in the world though, dude. Because I remember it was like three o'clock in the morning, and we're out there talking to some people, whatever. And he's just like, "What the hell, Nashville? It's three o'clock in the morning. It's NASCAR. What are you doing, Nashville? Like he was just all one. Finally, I had to take the mic, and I was just like, I was like, I'm, I was like, we're, we're gonna leave you guys alone now. We're gonna we're gonna go to bed. I was like, Rob, you've done you, you've done your job, my man. Like you've done your job. Like, dude, he was. I have never seen him so passionate. Like he was. But yeah. So if anybody needs to be the spokesperson for Nashville Campgrounds, it's Rob. Rob will get that shit lit as fuck. He'll get it over there. He'll find a way. He will find a way. He'll turn on that Alan Jackson, and he'll tell you to wake the fuck up. And he will go to I, I, Rob would knock on every door probably. If I would have yeah. asked him to go knock on every camper door, I feel like he would have done it. And you know he's not one to leave the spot. He's one to chill. He's a big chill guy. He's not one to go anywhere. I guarantee you that night he would have went to every camper. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I could agree with that. I could agree with that. So, but uh, enough, enough about Nashville. Enough bring about up, Nashville. Bring up this manufacturer. Let's talk a little bit about yeah, that's this a, rumor you're hearing. You read my mind. So, uh, according to, uh, I think it was on Door Bumper Clear. I didn't see the, the pod or the show, um, but I'm reading the rumblings on social media that Honda has possibly potentially signed a deal to be the newest manufacturer to join NASCAR, which I think would is massive, absolutely massive. We have been waiting on it to not be Chevy Ford and Toyota for so long. I mean, so long. This would be so huge to get another manufacturer in. And everybody, of course, the first thing that the typical NASCAR fan will do is complain that it's not Dodge. Why like Dodge? Wanted to be dodged so bad. Like, who cares? We need interest. Where's Dodge? Bring we back need more interest. Women. And I don't care if it's Honda. I don't care if it's Honda, Dodge, 
Lincoln, Mercury. Who gives a fuck? It's interest, and it opens more eyes and more business to our sport. So, I mean, it's massive if, if that's true. If that is true and, it, and it's come through that they'll be joining in the next two years, maybe three years, because I think, I think there's an agreement right now until 2022 or 2023 with the charter system. Uh, if they are able to join in the next two to three years, oh, that is massive news for NASCAR. That's massive news for new teams, new sponsors, and new fans. So I don't care if it's Dodge or Honda or some – doesn't matter. Big time if it's true. Obviously, it's a rumor. Uh, obviously, it's a rumor. Uh, we don't know for sure, but the fact that there's rumblings that they have been potentially signed, that's awesome. I'm really happy to see that. You I damn right. It's a rumor. What's this. next? Tesla? Bringing Tesla in there? No, I Tesla will be, I'm sure, with the companion series they talked like, about. Like last, 20, last in like week. 2040. When like we're all the Jetsons and like our like all we are are heads with robotic bodies, um. So, <laughs> um, the one, one thing that I'll thing say I'll... about this is obviously I had no idea because I'm suspended on Twitter still. Uh, shout out to uh, music and Rip. trying to hype Rip. up music, and then they're like, "No, you can't hype up this song in your video, so we're gonna suspend you." So I'm working on that. I literally had to call London this morning um to ask them to please check their emails because i didn't want to take the chance of it getting lost in the shuffle they did respond to me so they have responded to my email they asked me for the links that that were reported so I, now i'm just waiting for them to send a retraction to twitter and then hopefully i'll be back but we'll see how it plays out if not i'm probably just getting off twitter forever and just going to just let y'all have it and just run garage guys, fantasy sports account and tweet from there every now and then. So that's, that's all I got. I don't, I I made a new account. I don't even want it. I'm I'm probably about to delete it. I was like, this is just not the same. It's not the same. Um, I have a garage guy G I E. It's like, it's just not the same. If it can't be garage guy chase, I don't want it. Um, So moving from there though, I, it's cool to see another manufacturer. I'm, I would have loved to see Nissan. I'm a big Nissan guy, a big Nissan drift guy. I like drifting. Shout out to Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. That was the best Fast and Furious movie ever made. I stopped watching them after that because I didn't need anything else in my life. Um, and so I've always been a big fan of that. And But Honda's Would whatever, cool. I guess. Honda's big in IndyCar. So they're coming to NASCAR. Makes sense. That's the thing. I mean, Honda already, Honda already has like uh, – Honda already has like a, a a background in racing, you know what I mean? Like you said, they're in Honda. They're huge, or they're in IndyCar. They're huge in IndyCar right now. So it it, it makes more sense for somebody like Honda to come in and, and and join the equation. And like I said, I don't give a fuck. I just want it to be a new manufacturer because it's only been Chevy, Ford, and Toyota uh, since 2013. Dodge left after Keselowski won the title. 12 which was of just these same three manufacturers and when pontiac was was around in the early 2000s you had dodge and pontiac you had five manufacturers in like that golden era of the I early 2000s pontiac. i love pontiac. we got to get back to that we got to get back yeah. to that yep we need more I competition um, i used to it's weird i used i used to think those pontiacs were ugly as a kid and now when you go back and watch old races i think they look so cool they do. Oh. It's just different. It's like it's like the Grand Prix, dude. Like if I'm gonna, gonna buy, buy another it. old vehicle, like you know, I'm a big old vehicle guy. I still whip around a 2003 Chevy Impala, and I'm like, I'm at the point now to where I'm like, you know what? You know, we've made a we've made a little change off some Dogecoin. Like you know, I got about a grand. You know, I'm gonna take my one thousand dollars that I've made in my whole life. And I'm going to go buy a Pontiac Grand Prix that barely works. And that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be proud. I'm going to be proud of my Grand Prix. Okay. It's just a joke. But um, I will go buy a Grand Prix one day eventually. Be proud of that Grand Prix. Hell yeah. My my grandma had one. She was the coolest grandma ever. She had a fucking Grand Prix. I was like, my my grandma's got a race car. What does your grandma have? Um, And then for you, we're going to find you an old Monte Carlo Dale Jr. edition. Somewhere, somehow, we're going to find one. And we're just, we should be those old car guys. We're just two broke boys with old cars 
just living life, garaging it up, probably living inside of a garage. We may be homeless again. Who knows? Who knows? That's exhilarating. Really, exhilarating. <laughs> Doesn't that just excite you? Yeah. No, we won't be homeless. We, we have we have great things. We have great things in life. I'm already, already giving, giving, giving Dale the, 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 the heebie jeebies over here. But uh, don't worry. You can come live with me in my Grand Prix. There might be an extra room for you with my wife and my son. You'll have like a little back area. You can lay your head over. But uh, exhilarating. What's yeah. That? So, uh, but, but no, back to the manufacturer debate or whatever, if there even is a debate, the, the question is, is like, who, who do you think would be the first team that would jump to Honda? Cause like, I personally feel Somebody. like, I was just yeah. going to say like CGR seems like a team that would hop to Honda. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, you're good. Okay. I was just saying CGR seems like a team that would hop to That's Honda. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, somebody tweeted at us and, and says, key prediction for 2022, uh, CGR picks up Honda. To Who start said that? The next season. Uh, let me look real quick. I'll go, we'll shout them out. That's crazy. I swear to God, like I have not been on Twitter. I have no idea. That's wild. So somebody's thinking like, like, like me. That's good. That's good. Uh, can't shout out. It. While you're really? finding that, shout out to Ross Brand Chastain. Dude. P2. His name is Brand. Brand, Brand dude. dude. Uh, the Speedway 3. This is a uh, handle. NASCAR okay. prediction 2022. Chip Ganassi brings Honda to Cup. Would make sense with. Oh, I think they. Do they drive Honda? I think they do have Honda in any car. I think, yeah. That would make sense if they already had that partnership totally. in the. Uh, on the IndyCar side. Uh, so, but I don't know. Besides that, I think it's just too early to speculate. I mean, toy, I mean, Hendrick, Roush, I could see Roush. I could see Roush. I don't know. They're, they're on the come up with, and then no, if Keselowski no takes over. No chance. Dude, chance. I don't, I could see somebody like that that surprises us that would move to the new manufacturer to get some new steam. I don't know. Uh, but I mean, like, uh, Stuart Haas, Hendrick Motorsports, Joe Gibbs, like those guys aren't going to do anything. I don't know, man. Just just think about it. I, I don't know, though, dude. Running. Joe Gibbs, like. No, no chance. No chance. They're, they're, no. They've had the I know most they've movement. The past, but... They've had the most movement. They went from Pontiac to Chevy, and then from Chevy, they went to what? They went to Toyota from Chevy, didn't they? Yep, that's correct. That's probably but Toyota. Be, they have such a built. They, I mean, they carry Toyota in the cup. You know, they, they, they're the only competitive Toyotas. And then you have the satellite with Bubba Wallace. You know, um, which has been competitive in the past. But they, 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 Toyota will not let them go. There's no way they ever leave Toyota. They have such an incredible relationship there. What's the, uh, what's the deal? Isn't GMS rumored to come to come cup? To cup. They already announced they're coming to cup. We just don't know if it's full capacity or not, like a full-time season. So I think I think they're pretty in with Chevy. I think they're pretty in with Chevy. So, But who knows, man? I mean, uh, Ganassi seems like the obvious one for sure with their affiliation on the IndyCar side, if that is true. I think that is true, but I don't want to say for sure. But, um, yeah, no, it's going to be exciting, man. And then maybe when when Honda joins, you never know if that brings that opens the door for another manufacturer to pop in, like a Nissan or a Dodge or whatever. So uh, Kia, that, get the fuck out. Kia does That's not Shaquille belong in NASCAR. Kia. No, uh, Nissan. Yes, I would love to see like uh, like a, a Nissan Skyline, like an Altima Coupe, like or like just go all in and do GTR. Like that would be sick, dude. Like if, if Toyota, if Toyota hit, if Toyota brought the Super into Cup, I would want to see the GTR in Cup, so that battle could play out. That would be, that would just, I want Japan all the way because you know what would happen if Nissan got in. You already got Toyota there. Suzuki Circuit would come back, and I want that. I want that bad. That would be tight. That would be tight. No doubt. Shout yeah. out or throwback to the nineties. Throwback to the Dale Earnhardt Senior AC Delco. 
I want that jacket more than life itself. Like that would be the one Dale senior jacket I ask you not to get so that I can have it. And then I want the AC Delco hat that has the Japanese lettering underneath it all the way. Big, big, uh, I'm, big I'm, a, dirty combo. I'm a big anime guy now. Never watched anime, but I feel like if I put that hat on, I'll be a big anime guy, but only you NASCAR anime. Fucking, you couldn't fucking pay me to turn into an anime guy. I literally, I disrespected, I disrespected an anime person the other day because I was like, what is a manga? They were like, it's a manga. I was like, (laughs) thought it was a mango. Like, you're lucky that I said manga. Like, I I was like, are you asking me if I want an orange right now? Like, what what are you doing? (laughs) But yeah, no, I I don't want to, I honestly don't want to offend anybody. Like, Anime is not something that would ever be my cup of tea, but that that shit is popular amongst a lot of people. The I funny, don't get it. But Cody Cody Ware is an anime so, guy. There's a lot of it in the NASCAR community, man. It, that it, doesn't surprise me at all. It blows my mind though. Like is it is. It's just one of those things from left field for me personally. Like, but I will say this much. I am very big into the into Japanese racing and drifting. Um, I, I love it. I love uh, funk music, P-H-O-N-K. It's like trap, like Memphis trap, but it's got like, that's what they listen to in Japan. Like, that's what they drift to. It's like drift music. I love that shit. And, uh, but, but yeah, like, I don't know. I just, the, the farthest I've ever got is Dragon Ball Z. And same. And I, I love Dragon Ball Z, bro. Dragon Ball Z was cool. So I guess if, if that is considered anime, then I, I kind of like it. But I've never went any further than Dragon Ball Z. I just remember uh, the green guy, Piccolo. Piccolo. I love that guy. Shout out. Is that right? His name is Piccolo, wasn't His it? His name was Piccolo. Yeah. I just. All right. I'm, I'm tired of talking. I'm tired of talking about Japan and anime. This is a NASCAR anime? podcast. Say it again. Uh, and this is America. This is fucking Anim- America. Anime is it in anime? America. Anime. I, I don't know. I anime. thought I thought it was manga, but apparently it's manga. Anyway, uh, that's America. all the time. That's all the time we have. Uh, we're gonna give a big kamehameha out on the show. And uh, yeah, no offense, no offense to anybody that, that fucks with anime. It's just something we have not dabbled into deeply, other than Dragon Ball Z. And sh- and fuck the people that made the Dragon Ball Z movie because it sucked. And it was horrible and it was a waste <laughs> Never of saw time. It. Waste of time. Don't even waste your time. All right. We'll be back oh. uh, with the preview show. Pocono double header this week. It's going to be great. As always, appreciate your patience. Shout out to Duke Cannon, Inside Tailgating, the American Cornhole League, for putting us out on the road on this tour. We love you guys. We appreciate y'all. And we will see you again very soon. Let's go racing, sports, profit, repeat. It's the garage guys. 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 It's 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 the garage guys. It's it's the garage guys.